What do a trampoline, a thundercloud and a Van de Graaff generator have in common? Well, it can all give you an electric shock. Be able to understand why involves understanding static electricity. So static electricity occurs when two insulators are rubbed together. Now, insulators being plastic or anything that doesn't conduct electricity. When they're rubbed together, the friction between them causes electrons to transfer from one object from to another. Notice it's the electrons that are transferred, no positive charges at all. Now, this is what forms what's called static charge, an object being charged um, with static electricity. The most common example you've probably done is rubbing a balloon on your jumper or another insulator. Now, jumpers, just like balloons, have no charge. They are neutral. But when you rub them together, some of the electrons will be transferred from one object to the other. So let's say here from the jumper to the balloon. Now what that means is that the jumper will now have a small positive charge because it's lost some negative electrons. And the balloon will have a negative charge because it's gained some electrons. Now, the consequences of this mean that it can either attract or repel. So if a balloon meets another negatively charged object, it will repel because two like charges repel. And if it meets a positively charged object, it attracts because positives and negatives attract. Now, the name of this force you need to know is called an electrostatic force. So let's take an example here then. A balloon would attract back to the jumper because their positive meets negative and it would repel away from a negatively charged rod. But sometimes you can see it attract things that aren't positively charged. Let's say, for example, your hair. So if you put a balloon next to your hair, the reason it attracts your hair, even though your hair is neutral, um, is because there are positive charges in your hair or in whatever uncharged object. So there are positive and negative charges, but because it's light enough, the balloon will attract the positive charges in the uncharged object, meaning that it will attract that neutral object. It can be any neutral object, not just hair. Let's span this out then to a new situation. Let's talk about lightning. So lightning um, is between clouds and the ground. Now the ground isn't charged, but a thundercloud can be charged. Now you'll find it can be charged when there is a thunderstorm, which means clouds rushing past each other and there's friction. And lightning is an example of a spark or a sparking effect. Well, that happens when there is a large static charge, in this case in the cloud, that leads to a high potential difference. Now, the high potential difference causes electrons to flow or electrons to move, which we know as electric current. In these, this case, they flow through the air. Now, air isn't a good conductor, so they actually ionize the air to kind of make it into a good conductor. So it can flow even through an insulator. Another example of this is a Van de Graaff generator. So you might have seen one of these in school. Now, the Van de Graaff generator becomes charged again through friction between two insulators. This time there's a belt inside that rubs around and kind of rotates that causes it to get a charge. Now when you touch the Van de Graaff generator, a spark will fly. Now the spark will fly because there's a high potential difference between you and the generator, so the current will flow. Now this only works if you're standing or connected to the ground. If you are insulated from the ground, you will not experience a spark because the spark will not travel through you to the ground. So if there's an insulator you're standing on, there won't be a spark. Instead, what will happen, you'll still become charged, but the charge won't be able to go anywhere. So you yourself will be charged. You'll have a positive charge in your legs, in your feet, in your hands, in your hair. This is why you might see the effect of hair standing on end, because your hair is the same charge as your head, and so they will repel each other, meaning they move away. Let's look a bit more detail at this electrostatic force. Um, it's an example of a non-contact force, just like gravity, meaning it doesn't need to touch the object to affect it. Now, an electric field you need to know the shape of um, for positive and negative charges, or an electrostatic field, I should say. Now, for positive charges, we draw the arrows going away from uh, them to show the electrostatic field. Negative charges, the arrows go towards them. Now, it's an example of what's called a radial field, which means that the further away, the force decreases. So in this case, for both my charges, I've got two little question marks. The force decreases when distance increases. So the further apart experiences a low force and the closer one experiences a higher force because it's closer to the object. Now, to finish off, let's talk about static electricity. Why is it called static? Well, static means something doesn't move. In this case, the charge isn't moving. So sometimes questions will ask you, well, what if you put a conductor or a metal and rubbed it instead? Well, if you use a conductor, conductors are conductors because electrons can travel through them. So if you used a conductor instead of an insulator, the electrons will travel through the metal, so they will not be stationary, which means there's no static charge. You won't get any buildup at all.